Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about the life of an entrepreneur. Yes, I am only 22 years old and I look 50. And that's why, because I'm an entrepreneur. But no, if you're an entrepreneur, a window cleaner, a pressure washer, whatever, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, This podcast has been going on for five plus years of me babbling in front of a camera every single week without missing one. So go back, watch, search, blah, and uh, go find some content. Uh, I got a ton of content out there, so go do that. Uh, Shameless plug, I am actually a rep for windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource. The greatest place to get your window cleaning supplies, and I would love to be your rep. Yeah, you can have your own rep, a supply guy. That's me. I would love nothing more than put orders in for you. Uh, Just even throw it in your cart. Make sure you're logged in. Just shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, what's up? I want you to run my cart, and I will do it. It costs you nothing extra. You become one of my customers, and it's like a virtual high five. And uh, yeah, if you like the content, you know, it's a nice way to give back without actually even having to do much. But my number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone, so save it under Jersey. I'm the only Jersey you know. So save it. And another way, if you really want to be like, dude, you know what? Thank you for, you know, uh, doing some videos. I, I've, I've learned something from you. I just want to say thank you. It's American Window Cleaner Magazine. American Window Cleaner Magazine is the greatest magazine for window cleaners. It's been around since 1986, but it's completely revamped. If you haven't seen the magazine in the past like year and a half, you have to check it out. Go to awcmag.com and get a subscription or buy stickers. You like stickers? Each subscription comes with a brand new sticker sheet every single month. So you'll be up to date on your wicked awesome stickers. But even... On top of that, you can go and buy stickers. But go get a subscription. I see it. Every name, every time somebody gets it, I see the name. It pops up on my screen, right? Because I have notifications set. And I see it. I'm like, oh, yes, they got a subscription. It absolutely makes my day. So genuinely, uh, if you do, people always ask about Patreon and stuff like that, which is cool. I I appreciate everything. But just put an order in or get the magazine. And uh, that's like like Patreoning me. That's like being like, thanks, man. Here's a virtual high five. So go check that out. Anywho, today we're talking all about the life of an entrepreneur. The life of an entrepreneur. If you're new to entrepreneurialism, or if you're uh, new to small business or having a business, it's, uh, man, it's, it's put on a pedestal. People go, whoa, you own your own business? But there's a lot that comes with it right? There are headaches. There are uh, times of stress. Uh, No, you may think that I do look 50, but I'm not, um, unfortunately. Um, But there is a ton of good things, a ton of good things. I've personally been an entrepreneur now for like the last probably 20 years. How old am I? Yeah, probably. Maybe not. Maybe not quite 20 years. I've been for a very, very long time. And what that means is you then have control of everything if you're the entrepreneur. But here's the thing. If you tell somebody, I'm starting my own business. They go, whoa, awesome. What's your backup plan? Right? No one says, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to school to be a doctor. And they go, whoa, awesome. What's your backup plan? Nobody says that. So why do they say that about entrepreneurialism, entrepreneurship? Why do they say that about owning a business? And the reason is, the number one reason, and the reason you may be scared getting into this or why you have not gone full time yet, But the reason is people are scared that they somehow aren't secure. 
They don't have security in their job, which is absolutely mind-blowing because it's the absolute opposite. If you have a job right now, or you did and you can remember this, you have one boss. You go in your boss's office and you, uh, whatever, do anything and he fires you. you. You lose your job right then and there. Yeah, but they need me. No, they don't. They'll find somebody else. You get fired one time, you have no job, no benefits, no nothing. If you don't have a nest egg, you have no money coming in. That's why unemployment exists. Because so many people can be unemployed. So how is that secure? I, I don't get why people think it's secure to work for somebody else. Well, they get all the, the work and they don't have to worry about... Slow, what? You still have to worry about slow times. If that company is slow, you have zero, zero chance to help that not be slow. You're not in the marketing department. You're It's out of your pay grade. You do something for somebody as a job. You can't control if work comes in or not. So you have zero control if they're busy, if they're slow, if they need you, or they don't. You have zero control. So how is that secure, right? So people are scared of being an entrepreneur, but there is huge benefits. And the first one is that you literally decide if you fail or succeed. Like if you live or die is up to you. It's not up to the marketing department or the mismanagement or the merger that we had with the ho 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 ho. None of that. It's you. If you hustle, you win. If you work hard, you win. If you learn everything there is to learn, continue to learn and listen to podcasts about window cleaning, you nerd. <laughs> if you get magazines for window cleaning, guess what? You succeed. You're bettering yourself. You're making sure that your hustle is on point and you're the reason you succeed. Now, the crappiest thing that I say ever in five years of doing this show, I'm about to say it. And I've said it a bunch of times and I don't ever want to offend anybody because I never, ever, ever want anybody to hurt or, you know, I don't wish ill on anybody, ever. It's not my place. Even if people are a-holes, listen, I, I still wish you have success in your life. I just uh, don't appreciate how you, you act, right? But if you succeed, it's because of you. If you fail, it's because of you. It's because of you. If you fail in business, it is 100% because of you failing. You're in control. Yes, the economy can do something. Yes, the, uh, you know, whatever, the excuse. This is the only one I can really think about. The other ones are really kind of still under your control. Well, a new guy came into town. Okay. It's up to you if you succeed or fail. If you see things changing, pivot. You're the business owner. You have more control now being an entrepreneur or if you're going to be an entrepreneur. You have more control of your life than ever before. You have more control of your life than you ever have ever before. Is it hard in the beginning? Yeah. You don't go into business having a thousand customers. That part, you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm... Go get customers. If you have one customer right now, go get more customers. If you say, oh, I really want to get into route, but all I have is two routes, go get more route work. Go get the work. That's the hustle. That's the you. You are in control of that. You're the marketing department. You're the advertising department. You're the technician. You're the CEO. You're the CFO. You are all of those things now. You decide if you succeed or you fail. You do. 
No one else. You've never had control like that ever before in anything you've done. So why be worried about being an entrepreneur? If you're down this year, why not not be down? Why not figure out what's going on, fix it, and change it? If you like where you're at and you don't want to grow and you're in business, don't grow. Make things stronger in your company, but you don't need to advertise. You don't need to go get more work. You don't need to be bigger if you don't want to. It's your decision to be bigger, to stay the same, to whatever. But it's also your decision to get smaller. It's also your decision to lose 50% of your, your, your work, right? Or whatever. I'm just throwing numbers out there. It's your decision to not go get more work. It's your decision to see the writing on the wall and not pivot, right? It's a really uh, unpopular opinion, but it really, really is. You're in control of success or failure. All of you that are watching right now are a success. Even if you're thinking about getting into business, you're a success because what are you doing? You're taking time out of your day to listen to some dummy, me, babble about being an entrepreneur. What? Like you've taken that step. Like you've done that. You already know you're going to succeed. Another really big benefit to being an entrepreneur is there's no caps. And I'm not just talking about money because money's cool until you make lots of money and then time is cool. But time and money are the two things that people strive for in life. Those are the two things. Those are the two things that every single human strives for. And it goes, well, it's happiness. Okay, happiness then can come with having a blend of both. Or the blend for you. There are a lot of people who make no money and are very, very happy and content. It's because they got all the time they want to do the things they love to do. But you have time or you have money and it's a very small window to have both. It's a very efficient window, right? But there's no caps on that. If you say, you know what? I only want to work two days a week. Boom, done. You can do that as an entrepreneur. Fill two days. Get a water fed. Now you can get like four days worth of work done in two days. If you go, oh, I'm okay working five or six days a week, but I want money. I want to own something big. Boom. I know people who run multi-million dollar companies. Uh, if they're done efficiently, then you can make really, really, really good money. There are no caps on time or money when you're an entrepreneur. You control every aspect of your life like that when you never do working for somebody else. If I worked for company XYZ, they control my money. Well, you can work as much overtime as you'd like. Okay, there's still only X amount of hours in a day. <laughs> you know, well, I, I, even if I work 10 hours a day, five days a week, six days a week, what am I doing now? 60 hours a week? Great. Now I can like go and go home, sleep to come back and do it again, right? If I'm working 60 hours a week, that's pretty much my cap. Even if somehow I turned into a robot, which I'm pretty sure I won't. But if I did turn into a robot, there's 24 hours in a day. That's it. Everyone goes, well, there's no cap here. Yes, there is. Literally. Global rotation. Caps that. I can't work 25 hours a day. There's a cap. In the time, if I want all of my time, I don't want to work at all, you can do that. Four-hour work week. Right? You could be an absentee owner. If you get things to that point, you can do whatever you want. Lots of time, lots of money, whatever you want. It's in your control, unlike ever anything ever before. The biggest thing people have problem-wise with being an entrepreneur is that they don't actually trust themselves. A big thing, talk to a Grant Cardone. Talk to one of these guys that are really, really big, and they're, say, business coaches. They have the utmost faith in themselves you're like yeah well they're just no they're not cocky they're confident 
The reason they are is because they've proven that they can do what they need to do. They know their hustle. You ever met a guy who got into business and was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm planning on, uh, you know, my first year I'll do probably 200000 and then uh, blah, blah, blah. I've met guys like that. I work with people like that. The company, you're like, how long have you been doing this? And it's amazing. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, this is what I'm doing. This is blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I'm a, this, this, and this. Like, the confidence is not because they know that and they can do it. It's the confidence that they knew they could do it before they started. People don't get into business for themselves or slow play the beginning of business because they're not confident in their ability. If you know you can do anything, then do it. You're the reason you succeed or fail. That's entrepreneurship. No other company does that. Well, I know I could be a great asset for somebody else if I worked for somebody else, right? But if I worked for somebody else, they're then going to tell me what I make an hour. They're going to tell me how many vacation days I can make. No matter how great of an employee I am, they're still going to tell me how much money I can make. And they're still going to tell me how many hours I work. And they're still going to tell me, hey, our merger went through and unfortunately we have eliminated your position. It's uh, You've done such great work for... You've lost all of that. You've lost all of that. As an entrepreneur, you gain all of that. You have more control than ever before. But people don't have faith in themselves. Here's another just interesting thing, because I'm getting on my high horse here. But people will take money that they've earned. I've traded hours of my life for X amount of money. They get that and they invest it in someone else's company. Well, I have stocks. I'm diverse. What? If you have your own company, why would you have stocks in other companies? If you could turn around and invest it in yourself. How does that make sense? Now, let me preface that. Because all of you are angry and now typing me angry emails. I have stocks. I understand that diversifying just in general and doing other investments is right. But I also heavily invest in myself. It's the point of money as an investment. Invest in yourself. Think of your company as your company you can buy stock in. Never in anybody else's company would you get such a return. I could put $1,000 into the right place with the right marketing and turn it into $10,000. What stock can I do that with? Other than the penny stocks that I have no control of. It either does something or it doesn't do something. Well, it sucks because the CEO left and then nobody could run the company. Well, I couldn't do anything about that. Another thing in a company is you control your image. If you work for... Starbucks, and you hate the color green, you can't change that. If you work for a company who comes out as a horrible company and they have child labor in Cambodia or wherever the child labors are now, you can't change the image they have. If you work for a company that charges high interest rates, or is known to be a shady company or a crappy company, you're like, well, that's just, you know, you can't change the image of the company. You don't get any choice on the uniforms or what your stance is or what you help or what you donate to or what people think of you or what you can do for others or how you can help. You don't get any of that with that company because it's up to somebody else. You control the image. You control what you look like in your own company. There's something to be said for that. If you want to just be able to just help elderly, you could be that company that all the elderly people talk about because you're so nice, you make it happen, and there's a 50% discount because somebody that's on a fixed income needs that, whatever it is. Say you do, anytime you do somebody in the elderly community, they talk to everybody at the senior center, And you bring a bouquet of flowers every single time you do there. Put a bouquet in a vase on a table. It's the little things. Things like that you control. If you work for somebody that doesn't. The 
best part of being an entrepreneur is that you're creating something from absolutely nothing. Now, this is the only one in this whole list. If you don't have a business now, this may not pertain to you at this exact moment, but think about it. But if you do have a business, you have something now that didn't exist the day before you created it. It didn't exist. It's like penicillin. Penicillin didn't exist before it existed, right? Think about that. The day before somebody created it, it did not exist at all. Just like your company, XYZ Window Cleaning. It did not exist before that. Well, who cares, right? No, think about this. You've created something from nothing. If you have employees, you've created their life when without you, it wouldn't be coming from you. I've had employees that have had kids and that have cars and bought new houses and their spouses didn't work all because of what I provided for them by creating a business. It's not just about you. And if you don't have employees and it is just about you, the life you lead now is because of what you've created. If you have a boat or a RV or a motorcycle or any type of toys or a TV or even if you, you know, drink the fast, fanciest craft beers. It's because of window cleaning that you do that. It's the company you created allowed you to go buy stuff. That's phenomenal. You've literally changed something. You've created something from nothing. Now, what that means to you could be completely different. It could be completely different. And people, every time I say that, they're like, well... How does that really, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any, like, why do I care? Like, you've created something. I've created lives for people. I've helped people. I've um, been able to give people really amazing bonuses and holidays and things like that, where I know it's because of me that their kids got better toys at Christmas. That's something to really, really, like, say. That's really, really something. You're creating something. That's why small business makes this world work, makes the world go round. 90% of businesses are small businesses. You've created that. You've made that. You've created something from nothing. Right? And it all comes down to security. People always think, and this is what's been driven into our head, you go, you get out of school, you get a good job. Go get out of school and get a job, get a big job with a, a corner office and... Uh, cool. If that's a path somebody wants to take, awesome. I don't like not being in control of my life. I don't like not being in control of how much I make. Or when I don't have to work. Or what I choose to do with my life. I like the security that comes with being an entrepreneur. Any company who has failed, and they always say 90% of companies fail within the first year. Okay, that is because of the business owner. I'm sorry. The reason is, is that you're in control of success or failure. If you come to market with a crappy product and it doesn't make it through, you didn't convey why your product wasn't crappy. If you come through and you clean windows, you do pressure washing, house washing, roof cleaning, any of this stuff, you can create the best company around. You can communicate with the most people You can give them the confidence to buy. You can do a dentist close to have them return. 
You can upsell them to make even more. You can be the company. You're in control of that. If you're in an area, and right now you're looking and going, oh, man, it's just these these bucket bobs are killing it. They're just destroying me. No, they're not. You're focused on them. They're not destroying you. Nobody's buying window cleaning because it's cheaper than yours. They're not giving you the same product. You just haven't conveyed the information right. It's up to you. If you're in a slump right now, and you're like, oh, man, like, Dude, all these companies are coming in, like COVID hit me and this and that and uh, just pivot. Look at your situation. Get off the pity pot. Look at it and decide why it's happening so you can change it. Remember, a, a problem is just a question. A problem is a question. If you're not getting work, the question is why are you not getting work? If the answer comes in, well, Johnny just came in, or we'll use this. And listen, I know a lot of fish guys watch this, but I'm going to throw your name out there because people always say this. Fish came into my market, and I can't compete. What? What? You're focused on price. How are they in business? I can't. What? What? Focus on your value. Get out there. You know why Fish succeeds? Is because they're they have salespeople. They're out there all the time. They're always selling. They outsell you. If they have more than you, it's because they outsell you. It's really, really easy when you're an entrepreneur to look at it and be like, oh man, the world is against me. Well, you're falling into every other person who is not in a business of their own. You're falling into what they told you from the very beginning. What's your backup plan? I have no backup plan. My plan A is to succeed. My plan B is to succeed. My plan C, if everything goes bad, is to succeed. I control that. I control that. You control that. The security that comes with doing this trumps everything else. Any problem, you control. If a restaurant fails, it's because of the owner. He's probably a great guy, tried his best, but didn't do good enough. If the food sucked, he didn't change the food. If the atmosphere sucked, he didn't change the atmosphere. His problem where sales were declining, he didn't figure out that the problem is a question. Sales are declining. Why are sales declining? He creates failure or success. He's the reason he has security. If you don't, you're watching this because you are succeeding. Maybe you're down right now. It's a slow time of year. That could definitely be. The problem is, It's a slow time of year. The problem is, hey, we're not doing as much as we did last year. The problem is, hey, our growth went from 100% last year to 20% this year. That's the problem. Turn it into a question. You create the security. You create your security. It's just the truth of the matter. So anyway, I'm going to get off my high horse of ragging on people. But I love being an entrepreneur. I love it. I know that I can go anywhere and succeed at something because I know what I can do. Do Is it going to be hard in the beginning? Yeah. I mean, your car just stalled on the side of the interstate. To push it off, the beginning is the hardest part. You got to get the thing rolling and then there's momentum. You have no momentum when you start. As soon as you get momentum, it helps you be bigger and better. Your hustle is what pushes that truck, right? That's why I'm a commission-only salesman. That's all I do is make commission. I don't get paid a base salary. That's why I come on here every week and say, hey, I would love to be a rep, which I'm doing right now. (laughs) If you need any supplies, I would love to be a rep. Uh, My number is 862-312-2026. Hopefully, I've helped you in the show. And hopefully, you were like, oh, dude, heck yeah. Have my order. It costs you nothing extra. Not a penny more for me to put the order in. 
but I push go instead of you and I get credit for it. So boom. And if you want to be the most epic, awesome, amazing person, like genuinely get the American window cleaner magazine, the AWC magazine, American window cleaner magazine. Again, 1986 started. The thing has been around forever. It's the greatest magazine. People, when I got the, uh, bought the magazine a year and a half ago, they're like, why did you buy a paper magazine? Because it's dope. I love having a paper magazine. I love being able to flip pages and look at things and read things and do all that stuff. I love that. I know you will too. And you get stickers and you get posters and articles and you're bettering your businesses because of you. If you succeed or fail, go to awcmag.com and get the magazine. If you're uh, at the convention right now, the huge convention, I believe this episode is playing while the huge convention is going on. It's pre-recorded. But if it is, come say hi. We're there. Come say hi. Don't be shy. Make sure to say what's up because I want to see you and say what's going on you guys get to like see and hear me but i don't ever say hi to people so come say hi um but yeah either way understand that if you are getting into the entrepreneurial life or you are in it it's up to you go do that succeed or fail it's up to you but more importantly go out there and be epic